Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss reverse curve, which is a type of a horizontal curve in highways and railways. In this video, we are going to have the basics of reverse curve, like why we need to provide the reverse curve and what are the basic notations that we usually use in reverse curve. So let's first discuss what is a reverse curve. Let's say that this is our existing route that could be the route for highway or that could be the route for railway. Now let's say that we are having an obstruction because of that we cannot continue with this route. So because of this obstruction we need to change the direction of our route and whenever we talk about the change of direction of the route that is usually being provided by a horizontal curve and that is actually an arc. Let's say that we are changing the route by providing with the simple circular curve. By doing so, we can change the direction of the route, but we have to bypass this obstruction. It means we have to continue with this direction. For that, we need to provide another curve so that we can easily bypass that obstruction. So this curve, the combination of these two arcs is actually called reverse curve. So by providing this curve, we will be having this route and this route will be then bypassing this obstruction. So now what is a reverse curve? A reverse curve consists of two arcs like in this case we have two arcs which are bending in an opposite direction. One is bending in rightward direction, another is bending in leftward direction. In other words, you can say that the center of this arc is lying on this side and center of this arc is laying on the opposite side. You can also say that the radii may be either equal or different, but they have a common tangent and this is the common tangent I'm talking about. This reverse curve is different from the compound curve, is actually a type of compound curve because compound curve is a combination of two arcs, but in this case the two arcs are bending in opposite direction. Here the point to remember is they can be either equal. If there is two arcs and they are bending in same direction and they have same radii. So as a result of that those arcs will not be forming a compound curve because both will have a same radius and once they will have same radius it means those are not the two arcs but a single arc because their radius is same. But in case of reverse curve we can have a curve having similar radius but it should be bending in opposite direction. So this is a kind of difference between reverse curve and a compound curve. Now let's talk about the notations in reverse curve. Let's say we are having this existing route and now because of some obstruction we are changing the direction of the route by providing a horizontal curve that has in a radius of r1 and that will have the forward tangent as well. This will be the backward tangent for this curve and this will be the forward tangent and uh, this will be the deflection angle for this curve and we will be having another curve with different radius and having different uh, deflection angle as well. This will be the backward tangent for the second curve and this will be the forward tangent for the second curve. And if you extend the backward tangent of first curve and forward tangent of the second curve, you will have angle that is the total deflection angle of reverse curve and that is usually the difference of these two deflection angles. So then the root of transit will be like this. We have bypassed for here if, if there would be any obstruction. So this has been then bypassed with the help of this reverse curve. So let's say the starting point of the root is A, then this will be the start point of the first curve and this will be then called as a tangent point for the first curve. This will be the point of intersection between the backward and forward tangent of the first curve, the B point. This will be the end point of uh, the first curve and also be the start point of the second curve and uh, this will be the point of intersection for the backward and forward tangent of the second curve and this will be the last point of the reverse curve which is the end point of the second curve and let's say that this is the end point of the root the d point and that is actually the point of intersection of backward and forward tangent of the reverse curve. Here you can see that this t2 point is a 
point which is common in both the curves so this point is then being named as point of reverse curve now let's talk about the calculation of the data how we can calculate the data this tangent length of the first curve which is the distance from t1 to b or you can say b to t2 is being calculated using the radius of the first curve and the deflection angle of the first curve similarly the tangent length of the second curve which is actually the distance from t2 to c or c to t3 is being calculated by using r10 phi by 2 formula but the radius of the second curve and deflection angle of the second curve will be used if you want to calculate the length of the common tangent which is the distance from b to c so that can be easily calculated by adding the tangent length of both these curves so then the formula will be this one if you want to know the length of the first curve the formula is pi r phi over 180 here the radius of the first curve and the deflection angle of the first curve will be used and if you want to calculate the length of second curve so that in that case the radius and deflection angle of the second curve will be used and if you want to set out this reverse curve so that can again be done with the help of the two methods that we have learned for the simple circular curve by taking offsets or by deflection angle method or in kind method we can set out these two arcs and ultimately joining them together we will be having the setting out of the reverse curve so this is all from this video where we have learned about what is a reverse curve or, and how it is different from the compound curve and then we have discussed about the notation and how the calculation of the data and reverse curve is to be done in the next coming video we are going to have one problem related to the reverse curve so this is all from this video thank you for watching this video